other dearies, <laughs> like my cap, <laughs> it's supposed to represent a brain, and it's perfect for today's video. Notice that this brain cap has a lot of ruts. <laughs> it's all convoluted with a very uneven surface, so it's got a lot of ruts. And today's video is all about ruts. If you're just joining us, I'm Menopause Taylor, and I probably appear to be a bit nuts <laughs> if you're meeting me for the first time. I'm not going to dispute the fact that I may be a bit nuts, but today it serves a specific purpose. <laughs> this is Menopause University, where I teach you everything you need to know in order to succeed at managing your menopause your way. And I conduct my video tutorials like a schoolroom. I do everything in units. And this is a unit on Alzheimer's disease that began way back with video number 236. Before that, I taught you hundreds of other things that you need before watching the Alzheimer's unit. <laughs> so you really should start with video one and watch them all in order. We're in the midst of addressing your lifestyle management options for preventing Alzheimer's. And your lifestyle options alone encompass nine separate videos. Video number 253 introduced you to the lifestyle management options for Alzheimer's. Video 254 addressed the issue of how to use your brain to prevent Alzheimer's. Video 255 explained the kinds of new, different, and difficult things you have to do to prevent Alzheimer's. And this is video 256. It's going to address how brain ruts can cause or prevent Alzheimer's. Now, if you're wondering why you would need to listen to me blabber on about ruts, it's because ruts are more significant than you can possibly imagine when it comes to causing or preventing Alzheimer's. If you have my book, first edition or second edition. It's, a, it's wonderful to use it to follow along with what I teach you in these videos. The book is more to the point, but you'll remember the lessons much better if you watch these videos also. Okay, so I want you to think of yourself as a student and I want you to put on your thinking caps. <laughs> I'm already wearing mine, as you can plainly see. <laughs> so let's talk about brain ruts. At this point, you're probably scratching your head, wondering how in the world brain ruts can cause and prevent Alzheimer's. Well, let's see how much sense you can make of it by answering this quiz question. Which of the following is true with regard to ruts and Alzheimer's disease? A. Ruts refers to two different things one of which is beneficial, and the other of which is detrimental with regard to Alzheimer's. B. Ruts increase the surface area of your brain, which can cause Alzheimer's. C. Ruts increase the surface area of your brain, which can prevent Alzheimer's. D. Ruts increase the depth of crevices in your brain, which can cause Alzheimer's. E. Ruts increase the depth of crevices in your brain, which can prevent Alzheimer's. F. Ruts in your brain, but not in your life, cause Alzheimer's. G. Ruts in your brain, but not in your life, prevent Alzheimer's. H. Ruts in your life, but not in your brain, cause Alzheimer's. I. Ruts in your life, but not in your brain, prevent Alzheimer's. J is A, C, E, G, and H above. K is A, B, D, F, and I above. I know, I know. <laughs> the question taps into the double entendre of our topic today. That's intentional. So here's the quiz question again with the answer in bold. Let's start by defining the word rut. Rut is a groove or a furrow. 
So your brain has grooves or furrows on its surface. Way back in video 238 on how your brain builds up or breaks down, I commented on the ruts in your brain. And I explained that your brain has a lot of ruts in it as a means of increasing its surface area. Surface area refers to how much space the surface occupies. So a brain with a lot of ruts has more surface area than a brain that is smooth with no ruts. Here I have two brain models. Notice that this brain is large while this one is small. Also notice that this brain has deep ruts while this one has very shallow ruts. Obviously, this one is tan and this one is green, but that's, that difference is not significant for our purposes today. You see, these brains were not made with my quirky style of teaching in mind. Most educators would have only used one brain model and would not be comparing the two. <laughs> but I'm going to use their differences to prove a point about the significance of these ruts. And I'm going to teach you that these ruts are significant in a variety of ways. They are significant with regard to the number of ruts, the depth of the ruts, and the spacing or proximity of the ruts. So number, depth, and spacing or proximity. These are the three things that we care about. So let's address these three things as they pertain to the ruts in your brain. First is how many brain ruts you have. When it comes to the number of ruts you have in your brain, more is better. Now, why is that? Well, it's because the number of brain ruts you have determines how much brain you have. And that's because these ruts increase the surface area of your brain. So this brain has more ruts than this brain. And the more surface area your brain has, the smarter your brain is. The flip side of this is that the fewer ruts your brain has, the dumber it is. And like it or not, the dumber your brain is, the higher your risk of Alzheimer's. Second, we have the depth of the ruts. Notice that this brain has deep ruts, whereas this brain has very shallow ruts. Well, just as the number of ruts determines how much brain you have, so does the depth of those ruts. For every millimeter of depth, your brain gains a lot of surface area and a lot of size. Together, surface area and size of your brain constitute the weight of your brain. In video number 238, I taught you that the more you build up your brain, the heavier it is. We call the weight of your brain brain density. Density refers to how much brain tissue you have. The more you have, the more it weighs. You learn that the same thing is true of your bones. So our first two items of significance for your brain ruts have to do with the actual weight of your brain. The third significant thing about brain ruts is the spacing between them or how close together they are. You could have a lot of ruts but also have a lot of open space between them. Like this. You can have a lot of brain ruts that are so squished up next to one another that there, you can't even see any open space between them. Which do you think is better? Now always use logic when contemplating something like this. Which of these two options, this one or this one, is most consistent with the first two significant things about brain ruts? Which one constitutes more surface area, more brain tissue overall, a bigger brain, and a heavier brain? It's this one. The less space you have between your brain ruts, 
the better. Or you could say the greater the proximity between your brain ruts, the better. So everything about the quality of your brain has to do with these ruts. You want a whole lot of brain ruts that are very deep and very close together with no space between them. And if you have all three of those, it serves to prevent Alzheimer's. So your brain ruts are a very good thing. And the more you do to develop your brain ruts, the better you will avoid Alzheimer's. And the things that work to create more deeper and closely spaced brain ruts are the new, different, and difficult things I discussed last week. Those are the things that make your brain build up and prevent it from breaking down like I discussed in video 238. So you want to increase the number, depth, and proximity of your brain ruts to decrease your risk of Alzheimer's. Now, the ruts in your brain explain a lot, and they are very good, but there are other kinds of ruts, and some of them are not good. Last week, you learned that your brain is very lazy. It looks for every way to do things the easiest possible way. It doesn't want to work. So instead of choosing to calculate mathematical problems in your head, you welcome the use of a calculator. Not only do you opt to avoid using your brain whenever you can, you actually go out of your way to make sure you don't have to use it. So here you have a brain that has ruts and wants more ruts and survives better the more ruts it has, and yet defaults to avoiding activities that will create ruts. How crazy is that? And this leads to another kind of rut. Another definition of ruts is this. A rut is a fixed or established way of life that is predictable, dull, and uninspiring. If someone is in a rut, he or she is stuck in a certain pattern of behavior that prevents progress or attainment of goals. Notice that a rut and a routine are two completely different things. You may have routines or habitual behaviors that are very productive. You may routinely go to the gym every day. That's a good habit. It serves a useful purpose and it serves you well. A rut is just the opposite. It's a situation in which you are stuck in a bad habit that, uh, that does not serve you well. So don't assume that everything that's routine is bad and everything that's spontaneous is good. It's all about how well something is meeting your goals and serving your needs. And the key is to realize that ruts are precisely the kinds of things I taught you to avoid if you want to prevent Alzheimer's. In last week's video, you discovered that the way to prevent Alzheimer's is to do new, different, and difficult things. But those new, different, and difficult things certainly don't have to be spontaneous. In fact, the more planned and structured they are, the better. So new, Different and difficult things keep you growing and improving in all sorts of ways. That's the very opposite of being in a rut. But you also learn that people resist doing new, different, and difficult things. Do you? When was the last time you tried doing something completely new? Are you stuck in a rut? Or two? Or three? Most people are stuck in ruts. They have behavior patterns that they know are bad for them, and yet they just keep repeating them. They tell themselves they'll work on changing them, but they never do. This is what New Year's resolutions are all about. Do you go all year knowing that you need to get out of your rut of failing to exercise? but wait until January 1st to try to get out of your rut? Every day you repeat a behavior pattern that is a rut makes it a deeper rut. And every day you delay getting out 
of a rut makes it a deeper rut. But unlike brain ruts, behavior ruts are not better when they're deeper. Life ruts, behavior ruts, make your life mundane and unexciting. They dull your world as well as your brain. They squelch the curiosity, motivation, diversity, and determination I talked about in video number 254. You know, the reason vacations are so great and memorable is that you get out of your rut. Everything is new and different, which means it's stimulating. That's why you notice so many new things when you're on vacation. In your everyday ruddy life, you tune out most of your environment just because it's so darn familiar. But when you change your environment, you suddenly notice everything. You know, I have lived on every continent except Antarctica. I have lived in Germany, Taiwan, six different states in the United States, including Hawaii, Canada, France, Spain, Australia, Monaco, Malaysia, South Africa, and Argentina. <laughs> now, most of them were by, chance, were by choice as an adult. And when people ask me why I moved so much, I tell them it's because I didn't want my life to turn into a great big rut. When you move to a different country, everything is new. Even the simplest things can be quite a new experience. Most things are intriguing, but there are also all sorts of things that are just plain frustrating. But no matter what, they make you avoid living your life in a rut. You know, most people do the same things with the same people, in the same place for the vast majority of their lives. I'm a very routine-oriented person. I like my routines. They serve me very well. So when I move to a different country, I'll still continue my routines. But believe me, there is no way you can do things the very same way in different countries. So moving always turns my routines into things that are new, different, and sometimes difficult. Imagine what it'll be like for someone who has been in a rut all their life to ask, where did the time go when lying on their deathbed? And the answer will be, you did the same things with the same people in the same place over and over and over again for 99 years. Ladies, get out of your ruts. Stop doing the same old things the same old way in the same old place with the same old people. Get outside of your comfort zone. If your life is a rut, your brain will rot. Or you can say, if you live in a rut, you'll become a nut. <laughs> so your brain has ruts, loves ruts, and hates ruts. It just depends on the kind of rut it is. You want more of the brain ruts that make your brain bigger and heavier fewer of the brain ruts that induce you to stay in default lazy mode, and none of the life ruts that keep you in your comfort zone and make your life a great big rut. Everything you really want is just outside your comfort zone. You have to deepen your brain ruts so that Alzheimer's doesn't give you brain rot. You want to decrease the number, depth, and proximity of your life ruts to decrease your risk for Alzheimer's. In earlier videos, I taught you that you use the right side of your brain to process new information and the left side of your brain to store old information. So all this stuff about getting into a rut falls in line with that. Life ruts induce you to use only the stored information in the left side of your brain while leaving the right side idle. Here's our chart of brain buildup and brain breakdown that I've shown you numerous times. And I've placed checks in the columns where enhancing your brain ruts builds up your brain. And here it is showing checks where being in a life rut breaks down your brain. Notice how brain ruts contribute 
to every single step of brain buildup while being in a life rut contributes to every single step of brain breakdown. I hope this video inspires you to really do something along these lines to prevent Alzheimer's. You see, that quiz question wasn't off in terms of indicating that every kind of rut can either cause or prevent Alzheimer's. So that's it for today. Next week, I'll address how to prevent Alzheimer's with more focus and less distraction. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already, and you can follow me on FaceTime, Twitter, and Instagram if you're so inclined. And go to menopausetaylor.me to schedule a consultation if you want the absolute best way to tailor everything specifically to you. And I will see you later. I'm going to have the kind of brain ruts that make me smart. Bye.